Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video, which is my April wrap up. And it legitimately feels like I just filmed my March wrap up, probably because I did. But here we are again to talk about the books that I read in April. Once again, we're looking at a month where I read five books. Well, correction, I completed five books, but I do have two other books that are unfinished, one of them that I will be carrying into May, and the other one, as much as I'm enjoying it, I think I'm gonna use it as a reset, save it for later, and return to it, and just get started with all of those books that I talked about for May that I am very, very jazzed about. But as I said, five books, and they kind of were all over the place. We had a YA, we had a play, we had historical fiction, we had short stories. We, we had a variety of things, and unlike in March, where everything was kind of fair to middling, I had some really enjoyable reads here. Quite a few four stars, no standout five stars, but definitely books that I thoroughly enjoyed and would highly recommend. So why don't we dive right in? The first book that I want to talk about is my 3.5 star book, which is You Truly Assumed by Layla Sabrine, which is a contemporary fiction and YA title. This is not a book that I would normally gravitate towards, but it is the book that was chosen for my work book club for our um, March-April read. So that's why I did end up picking it up. And honestly, the 3.5 stars is not because I didn't enjoy it or think it was cute. I did. It's just not a book that I see myself rereading or one that I would have read for any other reason other than the work book club. So the entire premise of the book is that the main characters who all have their own POVs are black Muslim teens who are living in a post 9-11 world. In fact, the book is pretty much set today. And these girls who are like 17 would not know a world before 9-11. But at the start of this book, there is a terrorist attack in Washington, DC. Society and the public assume that it is an Islamic extremist. And as a result, Islamophobia is rampant. That is a reaction that unfortunately I think we are all familiar with and is unfortunately horrifically realistic. But these teenagers need to react to that within their own lives. And they do so by becoming activists <laughs> in a way. And one of the main characters, Sabria, actually starts a blog that becomes this like safe space for her to share her thoughts and reactions to everything that's going on after this terrorist attack, but also becomes this little community for people like her. And that is how the other two main characters, the cat and also Farah, end up meeting her. They all become a team running this blog together. And over the course of doing that, they form this really, really sweet relationship and friendship. But it is interesting to say, see the way that Islamophobia is described and is represented throughout the book. It is in things like the alt-right site that puts their blog on the list and as a result they begin to be trolled and even receive death threats. It also is indicated by people saying really microaggressive and aggressive things. It is also represented in vandalism and just the reaction of the Muslim community to what has happened, putting fences around mosques and the like. So you get a good feel of how Islamophobia and that hatred can appear in society. And overall, I thought it was really, really interesting. The girls are incredibly brave how they face this sort of hatred from people they know and also people they don't know is really, really great. Um, I would say, though, that I feel like this is a book that probably isn't going to age well, not because the talk of Islamophobia and hatred and prejudice isn't evergreen. Unfortunately, I think it is. It's because this book is so steeped in the, 
in the technology of today because these girls who never meet each other in person they communicate in emails and text messages and zooms and facetimes and i could see in five to ten years that some of that technology has probably gone away and been replaced with other things so it's an interesting facet of this book but i do think probably in another couple of years that might feel a little bit dated um my one main criticism with the book, which is more a me thing than a you thing in the case of the book, is that it does read a little bit too YA for me. I think that it is that a lot of sort of issues that come up are resolved very quickly, very cleanly and neatly. Um, I think that some of it feels a little bit sanitized, not completely, but you know what I'm saying. And also the book is just really, really, really saccharine and wholesome. And I honestly, these teenagers are a delight. I think most parents would love to have them as their children because I don't know many teens who are as respectful or as loving to their parents or their siblings as the three of them are in here. However, that is really just a me thing because I don't read YA all that often. But I do want to give a shout out to this author, Layla Sabrine, because according to the author bio, she's still in college. She's at Emory. So this author is between the ages of 18 and 21, would be my guess, which is really, really impressive. So yes, that are, that's what I think of this book. I do think that if you read YA, you'd probably get along with this a little bit more than I did. The next book is my 3.75 star read for the month, and that is Dimanche by Irene Nemrovsky, which I will try to avoid having too much of a ring like Claire there for you because I know how annoying that is. It, it hurts my soul when I'm editing, so I'm sure it hurts your soul when you're watching. But this is a short story collection by Irene Nemrovsky, who is one of my favorite authors. I've read, I think, is it two other books by her? They were both novels, so this is the first time I'm trying short stories by her. But this is a collection of 10 short stories written between 1934 and 1942 and translated from French. I read this for the Linguathon and I really enjoyed it. I would say though that it wasn't my favorite of the Nemirovsky books that I have read. I think that's largely because of the format. I do prefer longer story arcs with novels. I have a bit of a difficult time connecting with characters in short stories because of how like short that story arc is, but it was still enjoyable nonetheless. I think it was really interesting because a lot of the things that I love about Irene Narovsky were represented here. She always focuses kind of on the everyday individuals within society. And in this case, it's a bunch of different individuals living before the war and during the war in France. You're getting to see a lot of interpersonal relationships between husbands and wives, parents and their children, and basically just a really, really nice, um, selection of different human relationships over the course of the book. The reason that I would say that this is 3.75 stars for me though is because I think like with most short story collections there are always those short stories that kind of fall a little bit flat for you and others that really resonate with you. I think generally speaking I enjoyed the stories that were more towards the end of the book than I did the ones at the beginning. Some of those were a little bit slower to me and not quite as compelling. I think the ones where you're kind of in the thick of the war and seeing people reacting to the war itself were the most engaging and that's fine. Like I still enjoyed it. I don't regret it um, at all and it it was great. I think this was also a book that really gave you a sort of cross-section of different classes and talks about identity and 
all of those kind of woo-woo things that us English lit majors enjoy, like, really talking about. But yeah, would I read more Irene Nemrovsky? Absolutely. Would I read more short stories by her? I don't know. I think I'd probably still prefer the novels to this. Now we're gonna start talking about the four star reads, which were my highest rated books of the month of April. The first book is another book that I read for Linguathon, and it's another translation. It's Catalan Street by Magda Sabo, which is the fourth book of hers that I've read and is translated from Hungarian. I really enjoyed it, but didn't enjoy it quite as much as the other books. But the premise of this book is that these three families live in adjoining houses on Catalan Street in the like pre-World War II era in Hungary. When war happens, there are some really tragic consequences. The book itself though is largely about the four children between those families. So there are two sisters, a young boy, and then one other girl. The war has tragic consequences and the children end up having to grapple and come to terms with some of the trauma that they've experienced. The book covers 35-ish years, so you start out with them as children, but by the end they are in middle age. And it is a really heartbreaking story on a number of levels to see them all coming to grips with war and this sort of post-World War II Stalinist regime that has taken over the country. It does feel like it is a book that gives you a really interesting taste of what society was like at that time right after World War II, and I really enjoyed it for that element of it, and I think it's a pretty unique take on World War II. It's not your standard World War II fare. Um, but for me, I think the reason that it ended up being four stars instead of five is because I would say that the book is a little bit confusing at the start. Um, hold on. I would say probably a good 40 to 50 pages of the book really confused me. And they're right at the start of the book. So it felt like a little bit of a slog and I was confused and thinking maybe I was missing information or maybe I had like skipped pages and there was just a lot of a lot of confusion a lot of confusion I will say though that once I got past that part which I want to say is called places things started to clear up once you got into the set years that they were talking about, the more I read the story, the less confused I was, and that was a relief. It definitely required a little bit more patience in the beginning. Some of her books are slow burns. None of her books have like big climaxes. They're all fairly quiet and nuanced and really very much about the characters and their interactions with other characters but that definitely threw me for a loop. And I will also say, just because this might be of interest to some of you, that there is an element of magical realism in here that I did not anticipate, but it was interesting and I do like how it was used. And I'm not someone who usually likes magical realism, but yeah. So while it wasn't a five-star read for me, it was still really, really enjoyable. The next book is another four star, and it is in fact the play that I mentioned in the intro, Lungs by Duncan Macmillan. Unfortunately, plays don't usually have very cute covers, so all you get here is a very turquoise cover with the title and the author's name on it. But don't let that deceive you. This is really, really enjoyable. I first learned about this play actually at the kind of beginning of the pandemic in 2020 because the National Theatre was putting on a production via Zoom with um, Matthew Smith or Matt Smith and Claire Foy um, who had done the role on stage originally and so it was to raise money to support the arts so I paid whatever the like virtual ticket cost and watched them perform it and was just really really intrigued. So this is I would say a very 
modern play. It feels very experimental in how it's written. The staging, like there are no stage directions. There's no real description of the stage itself. The characters don't even have names. They're M and W over the course of the book. And it's actually written in a way that kind of is reminiscent of poetry because of how like the lines are broken up which I thought was interesting. It kind of remind me, reminded me of Shakespeare, although the language is quite modern. But the premise of the play is that this young couple are contemplating whether or not they should have a child. The reasons why they might not be having a child are because they're worried about the state of the world. They're like, should we actually be bringing a child into this considering like, global warming and climate change and war and everything else. And they kind of go down rabbit holes constantly, where it's just like a case of, well, if we create a child, like that's this much carbon emission or whatever, but we have to think beyond that because if our child has a child, then it's their children and also their children's children. And yeah, they, it, it's a swirl. Um, but it was so, so fascinating and so interesting to hear this conversation. And the play is kind of rapid fire, like think Gilmore Girls, and then increase that speed by like 10, because it's just constant. They, the characters are interact, are like interrupting each other as they're speaking, talking over one another, and it just moves really, really, really fast. Um, but I really enjoyed this. I read it in one sitting. I think it took maybe an hour and a half tops, but I think that the subject matter is something that is really of the moment. And I feel like I know so many friends who are having these conversations with their significant others and trying to decide like, do we or don't we? Not because of like their own concerns about finance or schooling or their careers, but because of like a larger um, sort of world ending apocalyptic concerns about where will we be by the time this child is a grown person. So I really enjoyed it. I would recommend seeing if you can watch the play with Claire Foy and Matt Smith somewhere on the internet, but if not, this is a really, really quick read, so I would recommend it. And the last book, which literally took me two months to read because I started this for her storyathon in March and just finished it today. And that's not because I didn't enjoy it. It's a four star read. I did thoroughly enjoy it. My brain is just mush. Um, the book that I'm talking about though is A Well-Behaved Woman by Therese Ann Fowler. And this is a book that I would most certainly recommend to anyone who's been watching The Gilded Age on HBO, which has the phenomenal like cast of Tony Award winning actors and actresses. It's gonna have a season two, I am here for it. But if you really enjoyed this, I would read this like tomorrow because it's about the same time period and the character Alva Vanderbilt that this novel is about is the inspiration behind Bertha Russell in that book, or in that show rather. So you'll see a lot of parallels. You'll thoroughly enjoy it, I promise you. But this is one of those like biographical novels that I often talk about and that I'm drawn to. It is the story of Elva Vanderbilt and her husband, when William Vanderbilt, in the Gilded Age of New York. Elva is from a Southern family that is not, they don't have money, but they have pedigree. And she is concerned at the beginning of the book with marrying into money to help her family enter the Vanderbilts who have tons of money, but not too much the pedigree. So it's kind of like a match made in heaven. And the majority of the book is over the course of William and Alva's marriage and seeing her doing all sorts of things to help to sort of elevate the status of the Vanderbilts in New York society and to further her own daughter's prospects 
And it's just really, really interesting because although as a New Yorker, I know of the Vanderbilts, the Vanderbilt Mansion in Hyde Park is less than an hour away. I didn't know much about Alva. And it turns out that she is quite like the feminist icon, which is what I really enjoyed about this book. She is someone who I think spent a lot of time trying to fit into the like societal mold, but she shines when she's not doing that, when she is herself and she is this fiercely independent woman with opinions and interests that don't align with anything that women of her class should be doing. She's into architecture and actually it is one who like came up with the plans and built a lot of the properties for the Vanderbilt. It was kind of her mind behind it. She ends up being an advocate for women's rights and has also interesting thoughts on how black men and women should be treated. She feels very modern in a way, which just is really, really interesting in this setting because it sometimes backfires. It does not always work in her favor, but it's just such an interesting and sweeping story. It really brings you to the point in her life when she's in her probably mid to late 50s. So you get a good 30 years in this book and it is a tome, so it covers a lot of ground, but it was really fascinating seeing her come into her own, seeing her opinions and her actions sort of showing her true colors. And I really enjoyed it. You also do get quite a taste of what like society was in New York during this time with the Astors and Ward McAllister and that set of people as well as like the dollar princesses or dollar duchesses whatever they were called the heiresses here who ended up moving to the other side of the Atlantic and marrying dukes and things like that so you get a good flavor for that and as I said if you're enjoying Gilded Age this is the same time period so I would highly recommend it um, but yeah, that's, that's all I have to say on it. I thoroughly enjoyed it, although you wouldn't realize it because it took me two months literally to finish it, but it was really good. And I do have another book by Therese Ann Fowler, which is her book on Zelda, which is significantly shorter. So I will want to get to that at some point soon because I enjoyed her writing style. I think it was very detailed but not over flowery um, and I think she just did a really good job at world building to be quite honest and there was some of that like cleverness in the dialogue that is also really fun. So yes, four stars for me. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm now a fangirl of Alva Vanderbilt and we'll need to read more about her. So yes, those are the books that I read in April. A variety of genres. It was quite quite the spread to be quite honest and even though I didn't have any five-star reads there were some gems here so I highly recommend them. If you read any books that you really loved in April be sure to leave their titles in the comment section for me because I am always looking for recommendations. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe because all those things help this little channel grow and they mean the world to me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!